is up, all you saints and sinners? Welcome to Confessions of a DIY Musician. We are your hosts, Marina City. I am Ryan Argas, and I am joined by my two very best friends, Toto Brenajiv and drummer Eric Samazarea. A drummer vocalist. I, I drummer vocalist, and of course, <laughs> uh, and, and songwriter, guitarist, and internationally uh, touring guitar player. Actually, both on both sides. Yeah, what sides. the fuck? Damn, I get all the badges. <laughs> yeah, and, but he also sings. Uh, he also yeah, sings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, singing is a very generous way yeah, to put it. Yeah, yeah uh, that's actually really cool. Uh, uh, let's let's let me set that again. Uh, <laughs> I am Ryan Argus, and I am joined by my two very best friends and internationally touring musicians, guitarist Toto Brenajiv and drummer singer. Uh, keyboard player, keyboard. keyboard. Oh, God damn, <laughs> Eric Samsuria. You're, you're contractually obligated to put all those things. Yeah. In, uh, in as you can title. see, my hat says support Ooh. live music, hire live musicians, uh, and that's exactly why we are on this podcast talking about the secret lives of your pets and musicians in between. So, yeah. um, we are real live musicians, not AI. We got all ten fingers. All ten. There you go. Jazz fingers. <laughs> so jazz oh, hands. jazz fingers. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Uh, shout out to my daughter. Jazz. <laughs> uh, what's the t- <laughs> <laughs> hashtag jazz hands? <laughs> <laughs> oh, was, I thought you were cocking a gun. You were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was like, that's any the boys out there sound. or women, you could be any. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Um, <laughs> anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so glad that you came and decided to hang out with us for the next 30 minutes to talk about things of the lives of a DIY musician. And today's episode is Do Not Sign That Deal. And we have had Mm -hmm. so many different situations in our lives where we are potentially still an independent band at this point. We have we are recording this way in far in advance, and you know, there's always something brewing in the background. But uh, we have spent most of our careers independent, and there has been deals that we specifically said no to, and we want to talk about why we did that. We want to talk about today why you shouldn't sign that deal that's in front of you. I know that right now you're getting the stars in your eyes, and you're just like, oh, I have to sign this deal, but there are reasons why being independent could potentially be a better situation for you. So we're going to go around and tell you a little bit of some stories about that happened to us that could have been, we could have dodged a bullet there. So yeah. remember, yeah. you too could also be making tens of dollars just like us. <laughs> yes. Yes. So <laughs> don't take wanna, the deal. <laughs> <laughs> don't take the money. Hashtag no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag bleachers. Don't take the money. Um, so look, we're not anti-label and we're not anti signing deals that's something that we really want to stress because like again there are conversations that we're having at this exact moment that could be something uh, that by the time this comes out that we are doing that but it's about the right deal and what is the right deal well i can't sit here and tell you what the right deal is that's only for you to decide but in the end you have to do what's what's good in here what, what feels good right in the pit of your stomach right in your heart and i know that sounds cheesy but you're gonna know when something's off Okay, I know specifically we'll talk uh, about the deals that have been presented towards us a few times. I want to talk about a little bit of a smaller deal, not the big gigantic deal that we had real quick. We had uh, an A&R reach out and they were like, hey, we want to sign you to this pretty well-known independent record label at the time. No names, guys. Sorry. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) out of respect, out of respect. They came to us and just like, I want I want you guys to sign this deal. I think you guys would be really cool. But uh, for us to really see if you're a right fit, we want you guys to come down to the studio that we have and perform for all of the like people at the label. I think every single yeah. person was there. Yeah. So we're like, okay, this sounds really exciting. At the time, we were like, you know, I'm not actually too sure if we even want to sign a deal with this record label, specifically because we had already heard a lot of horror stories. It's almost infamous on all the horror stories that this label has. Yeah. But at the same time, we've never done a record label showcase before. And our lawyer was like, you should absolutely do as many as you can, yeah. Yeah. get them under your belt, kind of figure out what you actually want. We got to paint the picture of this 
record label showcase. Yeah, and yes. I, I know we'll, we'll definitely get there. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, but what I really want to stress is that sometimes, <laughs> even when you know that maybe this isn't the right thing right out of the gates, you should just at least explore it. I, like I don't don't do something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Let's just put that let's put sure. that out there. Yeah. But yeah. I will say it was one of those situations where we we're just like. I know that we probably won't sign this, but let's just see how far the rabbit hole goes yeah. and just kind of learn from this. So we know what label we actually do want to sign. What are the good ones? What are the bad ones? Right. And such like that. So we yeah, went out I, and did I also, I also think it's an important thing to not say no to something that you don't have. Right. Yeah, like if yeah. we, if we never took the, the, the showcase and then we never would have gotten the offer to then say no to, you know? Right. So it's like, we, we didn't have anything tangible at the time, so we might as well do it and see what the offer is. And right. then we can be like, okay, no. And there's know. always doors that can open from other yeah. doors that yeah. 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 you yeah. take in terms of our opportunities. Yeah. So that, that's uh, and, always and, and on the table. And to actually fast forward just a little bit, some of the people that I worked with in my career uh, when I was doing merchandise and even back in the day when Matt was in the band, when he was working with the, uh, the music licensing companies, some of those people that saw us at the showcase were... Working with us. Yeah. So you never yeah. know. I mean, yeah, yeah. the industry's small, so you never know who you're going to pick up and then become friends with and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. do you want to paint the picture of what this showcase was we got there? <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, it's at, a, it's at a, a rehearsal studio in Chicago. They have a room that's, that's set up just like a venue stage, right? So we go in, we set up, they have a sound guy there, and it's pitch black. And then we're just like waiting, we do our sound check, and then in walks what, like 20, 40 people? Yeah. Something like, like that? at once. I was going to say it's probably more than, it's probably like 50. Yeah. It's probably it, like it 50. felt like a lot. Yeah, yeah, it like, was a Whoa. lot. It, it, was, it was a lot. It was a lot. And keep in mind that like they came in after we're on stage, we're set up. So it's just like dark people Lights shaped in your blobs, face. blobs like come and fill the room. You just see like room. shadows. Yeah, we just, yeah. So we don't see any faces whatsoever. And there was no and, talking. Yeah, there's no it talking. Was, I, in fact, we didn't even know that people walked in because I was looking at you, Eric, because yeah. we're like just getting ourselves ready. We're just like getting all the sound check ready to go. And then I turn around and then there's people there. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. just like they were just like little silent assassins. Yeah, I know. It's like, like all you heard was like ninjas jackets came rustling. in the room. Yeah, <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, whoa. And, and yeah. it's like quiet. 50? Nobody That's... said anything. Nobody introduced themselves. Yeah. No. And then it was like time to play. And what did we play? Like three songs? Yeah. Yeah, it was something like to, that. To a room of, of 50 people, totally silent. No claps. Arms yep. crossed. Yeah, no claps. Yep. No woos. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Silence. Just absolute stone faced silence. And uh and we finished playing three songs and we're like, All right, thank you guys so much. Uh and then uh they just leave. Well, yeah. and actually they left so quickly that again the song was over and I remember like like I turned my back to them looking at Eric and I like sometimes I do hits with my hands yeah. like boom 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 with him kind of thing. Yeah. And then I turn around and there was no one there. Yeah, like they, they like it was <laughs> dude, so it was quick so that they weird. walked out. Yeah. I was like, and, and we're just like, did they like us? Yeah. Did they not we're like, like I guess they hated it. I don't know. No, like I'm telling you, every time we did these full rock songs, finish the song, boom, and it just yeah. went. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, like the nerves of a show are totally different, you know? Yeah. Mm. Like, sure, you get, you get nerves before a show, but then you go out there and then you feed off the audience energy. This was like, like if you've ever played it, I, I think it's like, it's fair to say that when you play in front of less people, for some reason, yes. it makes it more stressful. One oh, yeah, trillion yeah. percent. And this I was like that. a weird phenomenon where there wasn't, like, there was like a good amount of people for the room, but it was that same vibe of like, yeah. oh, there's like three people here. Like, Literally no claps, like. yeah. just no feedback. Like, the, the amount of stress that you go under yeah. in a situation like, like that. Uh, what's going on? It's like, the worst. And the I, worst. And I, I, I get Are we it. doing this right? And <laughs> I get it at one point where you're like, I don't want to give too much away on how I feel about this because, yeah. but at the same time, like as like a human, don't you like, even if I've heard bad musicians, I tend to clap and like, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like good job. that's just what you do. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you could have just been like, all right, cool. And then afterwards, like, you know, it was just not something we're looking for, yeah. but, yeah. but they were just dead silent. Right. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. It was wild. Never saw a face. Never I saw no a face. idea who was yeah. in there. No idea. We and don't know who we, you, you are. If if you were in that room, DM us and let us yeah. know. I you. mean, honestly, you could lie to us and we'll be like, That's dude, true. I remember That's you true. and we yeah. definitely don't remember you. I yeah. promise. Um, but yeah, then we then we packed up and we like loaded the van and we were like, well, I guess that was it. No, <laughs> nobody calls, nobody texts, nobody emails. It's just, it's just, that's it, right? So we pack up, it's raining. And we were in like uh, just bumper to bumper parking lot traffic 
in downtown Chicago at the time, trying yeah. to get back to the suburbs to drop everything off. And we're like, we don't really know how to feel. We're just kind of like the the yeah. the van is a little quiet. It's a little confused. It's like. I think we did well. Like, no, we felt, honestly thought they hated us. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, we <laughs> I mean, it felt, was such an awkward experience it was so for awkward. us. You know, like, I mean, I remember feeling like we did well. Like, but you know, when when no one claps and no one says anything, you start questioning and go, yeah, yeah I guess maybe I should have hit that a little bit better. Or maybe that, whatever it is. So we're like, it, now you have to. We're we're already an hour and plus in traffic to begin with. Well, not to mention, you know, like an hour to tear down. That's what I'm saying. Hour to tear out. down. Yeah, yeah. Every load load out. It, it, so we're like maybe we're three hours, three plus hours removed from the showcase. Yeah. Okay. And all of a sudden I get I finally get a call from like someone that was working the AR that like hit us up. And he goes, Ryan, we really, really enjoyed your set. <laughs> Can you guys come to our office right now? We'll g- order you some pizza, and you come over to the office right now, and, and just like let's we'll let's chat out. and talk and we'll show you everyone. We'll show you around. Show you around everything. Yeah. And I was like, bro, like if we hadn't been in that bumper to bumper traffic, we yeah. had already been home, probably dropped everything up. I'm telling you, it's three plus hours after it was done. The only reason yeah. why we're still in Chicago is because we couldn't get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and so we're like, I mean, to be honest, we probably would have turned around and gone back anyways. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we would have done it anyways, but at the same time, we're just like, okay. So we just like, we literally just turned around with our van and U-Haul trailer mm-hmm. and we're like, screw it. We'll go to the office and see what's going on. So we turn around, we go to the, we go to the, the place and we show up and it's like, um, I think every music industry thing, especially in the Chicagoland area, but I do think that, Anywhere that you go, they're really uh, like discreet on what they are. Like you would never believe yeah. this place right here is a famous record label. Yeah, yeah. right here in this like uh, weird, just weird industrial office park. Yeah, yeah. alleyway or something like that. You know. Um, so we walk in there, but it's actually a really nice place. Super nice. It was like it, it, like we, Google we just got there. we just walked in and we just were love bombed. Oh like, yeah, it was just it was but, like a total one eighty. Yeah. You you do know you know what's a red flag though the Domino's pizza. No, it wasn't Domino's. It wasn't pizza. Domino's. It was even worse. It was Topper's pizza. I knew it was something Topper's. bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew like it was something because bad. Domino's is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It, I had Domino's last I, night okay, by choice. Yeah. It was delicious. By choice? Yeah, dude. You have you yeah, literally dude. live in Chicago. There's other things you can get. I mean, I was in the burbs to be fair, but oh. yeah. I mean, <laughs> No, yeah, Domino's, 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 it's, Domino's it's, it's not per choice, but like I'll eat it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good pizza. I, the only yeah. time I'm I, honestly got the only time I've ever eat Domino's is when I'm with you guys on tour. I'll Wait, take actually, Pizza Hut over Actually, Domino's, we shouldn't actually. be name dropping anybody. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's yeah, true. sponsor us. Yeah, and we'll <laughs> no, give you more no praise. Free sponsors, yeah. no actually, free. Toppers, we love your pizza if yeah. you give us money. It's but true, for right now, we are we're neutral. We're neutral. We're Switzerland. We're Switzerland. So, so. They do show up with the pizza, yeah. and the place looks like I'm not kidding. It looks like Google. They have like a workout facility. They have like they had ping pong tables. They had like arcade games yeah. that people can just go hang out at. They had these really cool like uh, the, all the records from the famous artists that they signed on the walls. Mm-hmm. They had it was just like it was like it, really thoughtfully made. It was yeah. a really cool place. Like you just want to hang out there for sure. Yeah. And the staff was super nice. Staff was super cool. super so nice. nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so they sat us down. They're like, eat some pizza, boys. And I'm just like, fuck yeah. And like, you guys did a great job. And they're just like, just love bombing and stuff like that. Like, what do you guys think about? Would you guys want to sign here? Blah, blah, blah. And we're just like, uh, I don't know. I mean, we're not, we're not with a label. We're not with the management. Uh, we're not with a lawyer or a manager at the time. We're just like, this yeah. sounds really cool. They asked us a bunch of questions about us, like what our dreams are, aspirations, all that kind of jazz. And then uh, we were finished. We're just like, well, we'll be in touch and we'll be send this over to the boss man, the actual president, and we'll send... Uh, we did. We never met. We never met him. No we way. never met the, the boss man, the guy who's actually going to sign as the guy that's going to do the contract. But like, we'll, we'll tell him everything that we love you, and uh, he'll send something. Like, okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if it was a week. It was pretty quickly afterwards yeah. that we get an email from them. And quite frankly, the deal that was sent... You know, you have to remember this. Any deal that is sent initially is always going to be the worst deal. Right, so they're always going to give mm-hmm. you the worst, and then you guys negotiate down or negotiate to be better off. And to be frank with you, I don't know if the deal was bad or not at that point. Like, I don't know how bad the deal was at the point because we had such bad deals sent to us previously. Yeah, that it felt like, well, wow, actually, you know, this yeah, actually it was, isn't it was, that. It was actually like, I, if I remember right, I feel like it was like tangible. It was fine. Yeah, it was it wasn't fine. amazing. Yeah. It wasn't the dream deal. No, no, it wasn't yeah. the dream deal. And at the time, we had a lot of people that were really interested in the band. So we were like, you know, 
we already are kind of on the fence about this company to begin with, even mm -hmm. before we go do it. We had a good time with them, but at the same time, there's just so much black cloud and black yeah. smoke around here that, you know, where there's smoke, this fire, and is, is this something we really want to do? And the deal isn't like life-changing money, and it isn't life-changing yeah. what was going to be. So right. is this something and that... The, the, the weird thing, too, is I remember, like, we had all these conversations about how, about the reputation of this label, and we were like... Ah. It's so weird they had this right because everyone was so nice. Yeah. Everyone was yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah. And the place was cool. So, but we just like, I don't even know if we did a negotiation back or if we just did like maybe something slight, but it was really quickly that we were just like, you know, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We loved doing it with you guys. It's just at this point, we just don't think this is the right step for us. Something really yeah, yeah. nice because you know to be honest with you uh yeah, by we don't, a fault we don't, we don't want to burn bridges yeah, yeah by, yeah, by yeah. a fault i'm like sometimes way too nice in my emails that my wife is like okay can you like bring it back a little bit uh maybe you said too much but i i we did say you know thank you so much we really appreciate it but you know was it isn't what we want to do and the guy came back and i'm not kidding he literally said do you know who i am and if you turn down this deal uh this is going to be the worst mistake of your career. And like, are you guys scary? This like, like, like really laid into us, really, really laid into laid us. In. Like I still got those emails. that are just like, I did this with this band. I did this with this band. And you think you can get a better deal. You're mistaken. Uh, you guys, uh, this is going to be, this is a stupid situation. And all this like went ham on us. And that was when we were just like, okay, well, we made the right we choice. Made the yeah. right decision. Yeah. Like, literally, <laughs> are you fucking like, kidding? literally not for scary at that. all. Instead, it did the exact opposite. What was it supposed we to do? Like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah, sign yeah, with yeah. you. Yeah. Like, like, no, man. We literally were like, well, looks like we dodged a bullet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, not even sure. I'm not even sure we even responded. It was just like, all oh, right, right well, we definitely did not respond. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, what do, we, what do you even say? Yeah. We're like, all right, well, cool. Sounds good. Bye bye. Um, yeah, and then it kind of tainted the whole experience to me because then it was like, like it was weird because we went talking to the people at the offices, they were so nice and so genuine. But then I was like, is it like a weird psychological strategy to like totally cool guy you at the showcase and then have you wallow in like self doubt, yeah, self deprecation for yeah. a few hours and then be like, Hey, that was really amazing. Right, like right. you guys should come by and like we'll get you pizza and then yeah. we'll kind of, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's actually really interesting because uh before we take our break here, just a segue what you're just talking about. I specifically remember another record label that the A&R told us they didn't like our lawyer and didn't like what the lawyer was asking and we should fire the lawyer and just sign the deal in itself. But they did it in a way that was like, hey, man, can I talk? Can we get on a phone call? I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, it's like, you know, what your lawyer's asking and stuff like that, it's just it's just not really feasible. It's not going to be really yeah. cool. And like, honestly, man, I don't know if this is the right thing for you guys to have this lawyer if he's going to be asking these questions. Uh, if it was up to me, man, I wouldn't even have this lawyer. And then like, let's just, we could just work together back and forth. And like, maybe. Yeah, that was like very, you know, like back alley policeman vibes <laughs> yeah, like, that, like dude you don't like, need to call your lawyer yeah. it's fine like <laughs> just like, confess you know, I just, with me. Uh, this this is gonna date this video by the time this comes out but i just watched quiet on set yeah and and uh and they literally talked about when they told all the kids at nickelodeon told all the kids that uh there was a predator a sexual predator mm -hmm. amongst them and they whatever they told all the parents to get out of the room yeah and yeah, yeah. to sit and talk with the kids that's like extremely illegal to yeah. do that. But yeah. that is, that's how it felt where it was like, Hey man, you know what? Uh, let's get the lawyer out of here. Yeah. And then they were, and then like with the uh, Brian Peck, I think was the guy that was touching Drake Bell. He was like, you should get rid of your dad as a manager because he's, he's going to make this really bad it's for like you. The same and then manipulative he goes, behavior. he just goes and fucking touches him and shit like that. And so like, <laughs> that's when, <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Spoilers. Oh, I mean, I guess oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'm not laughing about that. It's just the fact that I just jumped in it. But what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying you about cut this it, out, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, I, what I'm basically all I'm trying to say here is that when someone tells you that, hey, your representation, your mom, your dad, your manager, your lawyer, they should leave the room. They should get out of here, and you should just listen to me. That's a massive red flag in literally any industry that you work with. Yeah, it work in whether it's music or not. Like, run. like serious, Just run serious. Far away. Your your yeah. team should be the first people that you trust, and yeah. anyone who's trying to circumvent that yeah. is is being shady. Your your team is specifically here to protect you. Yeah, 
And and like honestly, God, even like I, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of momagers and dadagers either, but those people are still on your best interest. And if someone else comes in and says, get them out, that's going to benefit them. If they're out, it's a massive red flag. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, sure, you could have, you know, bad people on your team, yes. but that's a whole separate that's, issue. That's a whole yeah. other conversation. Honestly, I would love to have a a a talk about that yeah, one there's, day. We'll there's have, definitely we'll, some things we can say about that too. We're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a podcast about uh, maybe the people on your team are not the right people. But yeah. uh, before we get to the next section here, I do want to break for an ad. Our ad today is uh, MarinaCityBand.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, MarinaCityBand.com. Make sure pizza. you go to MarinaCityBand.com and go pick yourself up something nice. That's right. You can go to the shop and get some uh, hoodies, shirts, whatever's still on sale because, honestly, we sell it so quickly, we got to make sure that things get back on sale. So go there right now before your favorite item is sold out. On top of that, there's also subscribing to this podcast on there, our Discord, which is probably the most important thing that's on there is our discord where it's a cool community where all of our people from all across the world are talking and uh not only about marina city but maybe their favorite music maybe they're venting about certain things and it's a safe space to do it so uh maybe they're talking about they're gloating about something that they're really proud about either way it's a beautiful community amongst a bunch of people all across the world that love the same things that you do and on top of that at the marinacityband.com you can see where we're going to be playing next i'm sure we're going to be on tour right now maybe we're on tour in a couple weeks either way you want to find that out before everyone else does and they sell out and you can't get those tickets so make sure you go to marinacityband.com for that as well and lastly make sure you guys are texting us at 815-609 oh I, you know, I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> I was like, I just like eight six seven, seven five three zero oh, nine. nine. <laughs> oh, oh, great ad! Eight one five four zero six six two zero nine. Eight one five four zero six six two zero oh nine. Nice. Whoa. You should write one songs. way to do it. <laughs> 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 <That> works. <laughs> okay, so uh, that is our sponsor for today. <laughs> that was incredible. We need a jingle. I decided we do need a jingle for that. We do need a jingle for that. Okay, so uh, we, you know, this next story, I feel like, let me ask you guys this. We got about eight minutes left. Do you guys want to jam in the big story or do you want to do a different podcast? I think we need to do a part two. We're going to do a part two. Yeah, we'll do a part two. So that's good because we have that one even has more details than the one that we just did. There's so much more detail to that one, too. So why you shouldn't take that deal? Uh, Well, then the last eight minutes that I do want to talk about the one manager that came to us who was in a uh, he was in a uh, a pretty big band at the time. They're no longer a band. Um, And he came to us and we were like, we just played a show with him. And he was like, hey, I think I really like your band. I think it'd be really cool to manage you guys. Here's his contract. Check it out. And I specifically remember in the contract that there was things about like how uh, we had to pay for his wardrobe if uh, he went out on like a business trip. We had to pay for his business trip expenses. We had to pay for the food um, that he would go out with. And there was no limit in the expenses that he could do. And our lawyer at the time was like, okay, I mean, I, I've seen this before and it's not necessarily uncommon for that because he's basically just saying like, if I'm going out to do this, you're going to reimburse me. But... There's got to be some kind of limit here. So yeah. the lawyer goes and he's like, hey, we're going to put some limit on here. Maybe it's only like, I think, $500 a month or you know something like that that you can really do. Otherwise, you got to pay out of your pocket. You got to invest into this as well. Yeah. You know, it can't just be from you Marina City. You know, you can't we're be not. like, hey, I'm going to like wine and dine this manager and I'm going to fly him to London. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> so like you have to look out for those things that sometimes you got to put a limit on those kind of deals here. Um on what their spending is if they're going to do that. So we were already not like super stoked that that was in the contract to begin with. And then that being a thing, we're just like, "Mm, like, that's not cool. So I go and I approach him. I say, you know, man, you know, there's some things in this contract that like, it's kind of red flaggy. Like, you know, we're not really big into this thing. We're not really big into that. And he's like, oh, that's in the contract. Oh, you know, I honestly, I just had, I think his girlfriend or something was like a, like a practicing lawyer. Yeah. She, she just kind of wrote this up. I'm, I'm not actually too sure. Like, honestly, whatever you guys want to put in there is cool. And I was like, wait, wait what? what are you talking about? You don't even know the contract that you're sending. You don't know what's yeah, in I mean, there. Like, come and, on. But, but this goes, this goes both ways. And I yeah. think if, if you're trying, if, if you're a potential manager listening to a band or trying to look for bands or vice versa, like, 
read the contract. Yes. You know, like yes. <laughs> anyone who says don't read the contract, just sign it. Like yeah. that's that's just like an age old or, or red have, flag, like a like, lawyer or you yeah. know somebody who is in that field and yeah. understands all that terminology. Exactly. You, you know, know. I, I've I've been fortunate enough to read a lot of contracts from going to school for it, for doing the band, for uh, my jobs that I've had to do. So I, but even though I still understand or I think I understand something, there could be like they put of instead in that little thing here and so you're like little oh qualifier uh, it's like know? yeah so yeah. i mean I, I get that that sounds about right but no, no no it's like you get the idea of it but that idea may not be what you actually think they're actually talking about tricky, and that tricky. one of yeah. that they put in that sentence really just screwed everything up yeah, you know change everything. could change everything up yeah. so I, I do think that you should go get especially for bigger deals um that are a little bit more complicated and that you're going to represent you you should definitely have some kind of lawyer or someone look that look that up for you. But you know, I I think the larger thing, it's like, yes, for sure, read through your contracts and look for red flags. And there's a billion different strategies to yeah. do that. But I think the the larger sort of core of what we're trying to get at is like, don't don't sell yourself too short. Yeah. You know? Like you should still, in a lot of ways, hold out for the quote unquote dream contract. Is that ever going to be a perfect deal? Probably not. Yeah. You know, no. Right. Maybe probably no one's going to come up to you and be like, "Hey, here's four billion dollars. Uh, do whatever you want." Yeah, like, it's, it's never not. Gonna it's that. never yeah. going to be that. You know. Yeah. So, um, but but I I do think it's important to like know your worth and know your value and and recognize when when those values aren't being met. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, it's a give and take process and you have to go, how much do you want to give to this deal? And if you feel like it's past your breaking point of how much you want to give to this deal, then it's not the right deal. That doesn't yeah. necessarily mean it's a bad deal, like universally a bad deal. Yeah. Maybe it's a better deal for someone else, but specifically for you, what your goals are and what if this person or if this entity is going to be able to take you to those goals. Yeah, and look, it's going to be the hardest decision you may ever have to make in your life to be like, no, I can't. Right. I can't do this. But you have to have some some self respect. It's the same thing. Like, like we've kind of talked about it with like like gear endorsements. You know, yeah. like if if like backyard drumstick company comes to me and is like, "Hey, you want to play my drumsticks for free?" I'm gonna be like, uh, "Respectfully, no. I <laughs> right. <laughs> I really like what I use right now, and you know, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for what I like to do right. rather than like." go with something that's unreliable just because they're the first person to kind of put stars in my eyes. So yeah. it's that, it's that same kind of vibe. Like yeah. you, w you want the contract that you want and you should get the one that you want, uh, and not just take the first one that kind of like yeah. woos you. Yeah. I feel like there's no perfect contract really. Yeah. I mean, no. like you said, like no one's going to pay you a million dollars and be like, totally go do what you want with it. You know, we're not going to look over you. You can just be a free bird. You know, I don't think yeah. that exists. Um, I think that when you have a contract, you want to make sure that, you know, there's advantages towards you and, and of your interest, but also don't get taken advantage of yeah. from said record label, you know, because I because at the end of the day, it is a business. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're trying to they're trying to make profits off your fans and, and what you can offer in terms of like, you know, your music mm -hmm. and Spotify and whatever, you know, there's so many things that yeah. um, so many other details in, in that. But the thing you feel like you're getting taken advantage of. That's probably yeah. probably where you should draw the line. I mean, to, the thing to remember is that if you're getting offered any kind of contract ever, then that means what you do has value, mm -hmm. you know, and you have to value that uh, on your own terms. Yep. Right. Yep. That we're in an interesting time now where you you can make a, a respectable living being completely independent, yep. and that's something that you know was increasingly less possible twenty, thirty, forty. 50 years, years ago, ago yeah. you know? Yeah. So like, don't feel free to say no and be like, actually I, I can do a lot of what you're offering by myself, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I, you know, there's uh, some general things that maybe we should have started out with in the beginning here, but I do want to say like, what is a record label? And the end of the day, the record label is a bank and that's someone that's investing in what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And so that bank just like a regular bank in Chase and everything else, they want to get their money back. And so not just is it, it's not just music industry that has bad deals or complicated deals, but everything does, right? When you go buy a house and everything, they still want, you need to pay that all back. 
They they gave me a mortgage to buy in the house, and now I have to pay them back over thirty years. It's especially a small business. Loan. A small business yeah. loan. That's so they're giving you money, and they expect you to do well to give them money back. They want to make money from you. That's how they're, they're a business. Yeah, it's a mutual so deal. It's a mutual deal. They need to make money from you so that they need to pay for their health care and everything just as much as you need to do it. So that's what that is. The other thing too is you have to remember that a record label specifically, traditionally, is only supposed to be owning your master recordings. So the actual physical recording of your song, not the song itself. That is the publisher. The publisher will own the actual song itself. So if you own, for example, we'll use us, for example, Addicted, our song Addicted, uh, or you know, maybe it's even a better situation. Like we just came up with this EP Stay, uh, this, this EP Stay. We recorded it and we own the, the song. So the old recording of, of uh, Keep Your Faith In Me, the old recording of Keep Your Faith In Me, Potentially, the other members of the band back then get money from that because they were part of it and they own that. Now, the new recording of Keep Your Faith In Me, that's something that we did. We own that as the three of us, right? The song Keep Your Faith In Me, every single member who was part of it, no matter what, still get money from that because they actually recorded, they're, they're, they wrote that song. There's yeah. two parts of each song here. And so a record label is going to own the master recording of that. The same reason why Taylor Swift is out there re-recording all of her music because she owns the actual physical song, uh, not the physical song, the idea of the song and not the physical of the song, but now she's going to own the physical part of the song. So when you're looking at that, realize that's what they're doing. And if they want to take both the publishing and the master of it, you have to really look into see if that's the right deal for you. Because you bucks, really want to have some stuff. <laughs> what do you say? Big, that's life-changing that's money. That's life-changing yeah. money. I mean, people are doing that right now. Like, you know, Justin Timberlake and Jay, yeah. uh, J- Justin Bieber, I think, either. Yeah. They, they come out, they're like, oh, we just sold we our, my sold whole catalog our for $800 mm-hmm. million. Dollars. And what they mean by that is that they gave up their rights for the actual idea of the song. They do not own that idea of that song anymore. Someone else owns it, so they can do whatever they want with that. So, uh, anything else? While we are ending this episode, mm. no, nope. right, next hey, time. Uh, Domino's Pizza hit us up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah a hundred million dollars, please. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Confessions of a DIY Musician. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, to our uh, stuff on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your podcast. It has been a pleasure talking to you guys today, and we will see you next time. Adios. Peace out. Bye-bye.